Vanakam and welcome to Excel Tech. In this video, we are going to see how to use a record macro in Excel. So where we can use this record macro? So if you are doing the same task on daily basis or repeatedly, you can use this record macro option. Once you recorded the macro, you can run this again and again. So macro can do what are the activities you have recorded. For example, in this data, I need to add up borders and for header, I need to give a different color and for price and total sales amount, I need to add a dollar symbol. So all this I need to do repeatedly on daily basis. In this case, you can use the record macro. You can record the activity once you do and you can run again and again to repeat the same task n number of times. For any macro activities, you need to have a developer tab. So we already seen how to enable developer tab in our previous video. So go to developer tab. In developer tab, you can able to see record macro. Either you can click this record macro option or status bar, you can able to see a record macro button. Once you click, you can get a record macro menu. So in record macro menu, first you need to give a record macro name. So you can give any name as you wish. But the only thing is you should not give any space in between. If you name with space, when you click OK, you can able to see the name that you have entered is invalid. So instead of giving space, you can just add an underscore. And next one is the shortcut key. The shortcut key is optional. You can assign, you can assign any shortcut key, but that should not be already in use in Excel. For example, you are giving control A. So control A is to select all data in the Excel. So if you assign a shortcut key as control A, when you hit a control A, it will not select the data. It will only run this macro. So just give a shortcut key which, which is not already used in Excel. So for example, Control Shift A you can give Control Shift B. So this kind of shortcuts are not already used in Excel. So if I like to add a Control Shift A, so Control is by default, just give Shift A. So when you press Shift A, that will be added as a shortcut. Store macro in this workbook, new workbook or personal workbook. You can see anything you want, but I am okay with the current workbook. So I can just select the, this workbook. And description, description you can give as you are wish. So I can give just sales data formatting macro. Now you can click OK. And here everything is optional, nothing is mandatory. Macro name also by default, it will be created macro 1, macro 2, macro 3. If you want to change, you can go and change the macro name. If you don't want to make any changes, you can leave as it is. And if you don't want the shortcut, you can ignore it. If you don't want description, you can ignore it. By default, the macro will be stored in this workbook. So here everything is optional, nothing is mandatory. Only if you want to make changes, you can go ahead and change and hit OK. Moment you click OK, immediately the record macro will be running. You can able to see that in the status bar. Now you can start progress your activities. So I can select my data. Go to home tab, add a borders and select the headers, change to different color and font color also. I'm just bolding it and just align middle. I'm going to add a dollar symbol here. Finally, I need to add a total and for total, I need to give this but just click the border. So this is the action I will be doing on daily basis. I done my actions. So now you can go and stop the macro from here or from the developer tab. So I'm going to sheet two. I have the same data here. So we have given a shortcut as control shift A. If it control shift A, immediately it will do all the formatting. So now let's move on to sheet three. For example, I don't give any shortcut. So in this case, you can go to macros from the developer tab. Alternatively, you can also use a alt F8. That is the shortcut to see the list of macros. So when I click the macros, you can see the list of macros already available in workbook. So now you can click run. The moment you click run, it will be done immediately. Likewise, you can record any Excel repeated task and use a macro to run whenever you want. But there are few disadvantages in record macro. The one thing is, for example, I have additional rows here. Now I am running the macro. So it will only run for the fixed range. So it won't select their own range and run a macro because we have only selected data from B1 to J10. So it will only run from B1 to J10. This is one of the disadvantage. And the second thing, keep it in mind, Whenever you are recording macro, unwantedly don't navigate to any of the Excel sheet. So if you move unwanted workbook or unwanted sheet, that will also be recorded in macro. So you may get an error when the workbook or worksheet is not available when you rerun it. These are the things you need to keep it in mind. However, in ranges, we can change it dynamically that we are going to see in the upcoming videos. As we have started seeing the scenario videos, we have around 90 plus scenarios in VBA. So when you know all the 90 scenarios, you can easily develop a macro. You can easily edit the recorded macro. You can easily create a automation templates in Excel. For sure, we will be trying to cover all the scenarios in future videos. If you want to see this recorded macro, go to Visual Basics so you can be able to see the codings. When you learn all the scenarios, you can also be able to know how to edit this recorded macro. Let me know in comments if you already use a record macro or after this video, are you going to use a record macro for your daily activities? Let me know in comments. That will be really interesting for me to know. And after recording your macro, do not forget to save that file as 
excel macro enabled workbook otherwise you will lose all your codings thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel for more videos we'll see in another excel video until then bye from arvind